Hey, hi everyone. Um, hey, Sangha, welcome back to this three-part uh, video series that we are doing on the enterprise platform technology market and the satisfaction ratings for both technology platforms and service providers. Thanks, Rodak. Thanks for having me here. So, <clears throat> Sangha, I think for folks who are just you know, looking at this video but haven't seen the other first two videos, I think just a quick recap, right? We've been talking about you and your team having done more than 200 plus uh, buyer satisfaction interviews to understand the expectations of buyers of technology. That's the ERP and the you know CRM and digital platform technologies of Salesforce, ServiceNow, Pega, Adobe, and you know a lot of other platforms. And what you've been doing is you've been looking at what are the client expectations from the technology providers and also from the service providers, which is the system integrators who are implementing these systems and kind of building on top of it. So the previous two videos, we talked about the enterprise satisfaction and how it is evolving and changing for the technology provider. This one, I, I thought we will focus on the service providers. And one slide that kind of took my attention from the report was uh, the one where we mentioned the overall satisfaction ratings, right? If you have to aggregate it across all the interviews that you did, with service providers on these platforms has kind of dipped in 2021 vis-a-vis -vis 2020. And I thought, you know, I will let you kind of comment on what have been the factors that have contributed to this dip in this, you know, sat enterprise satisfaction score with the service providers and what would be your recommendations to service providers and how can they avoid this going future? Sure, Anand. So here is the story. The scores went up too much in 2020. And uh, SIs couldn't sustain the high levels of satisfaction. The expectations evolved from enterprises and remote delivery and flexibility uh, now are now part of base level satisfaction. Uh, they have started looking for a thought leader in the service providers to help them think and stay ahead of the curve. They want service providers to guide them with whether or not the their product roadmap fits with their broader business roadmap or not. Okay. So they look for a system integrated to implement a platform, but look for a more of a transformation partner now. So uh, let's kind of double click on this, right? And show what are the different parameters and how this is kind of varying. Because this is very interesting. You're mentioning that there is a massive increase in the satisfaction score in 2020, which is the year where there was maximum distress. Customers were really happy in terms of, you know, how the entire transition to remote was. And, you know, there was a higher degree of empathy and more scores going up in terms of satisfaction. But as we moved into 2021, hey, the expectations have now further increased, right? The transformation appetite has gone up. The demand has gone up. So all those issues are kind of, you know, causing this newer set of expectations, which is where the satisfaction scores are coming down. So if you could unpack this across these different dimensions you have in the research, it will be really helpful. Sure. So here you can see the split of scores across various dimensions for 2020 and 2021. Earlier, enterprises expected a good technical implementation and service providers were rated high for the technical capabilities and also for showcasing that flexibility and responsiveness. But now these are base level satisfaction. So you can see here domain expertise, consulting capabilities, and innovation have taken a turn. So this is what I was telling. Client level contextualization has become more important now than ever. So enterprises are looking for someone who is able to think ahead of the competition and also be proactive in bringing innovation and thought leadership upfront. But there are certain parameters where uh, there is slight uptake, for example, talent management, if you see. The reason is that enterprises understand that there is a issue in the broader market. The slight uptake is because of the responsiveness of these service providers in addressing the talent gaps. In, a, in some of the products, there is a talent crunch uh, within the larger product family, say in SAP, Conquer and Ariba, if you take service providers do not have many resources in the market. Say even in uh, service now, if you see, uh, they have a lot of uh, talent in on the IT side, but if you see CSM or HRSD, it's very hard to find talent for these specific products. 
Now this is, I think, interesting, right, Sangha? So there is a talent issue which I think we recognize. But I, I kind of also go back to your early point, earlier point that you made, right, which is there is a high degree of correlation between understanding of the client context, understanding the industry context, and bringing together the solutions that are being provided by the technology providers in the context of all of this. So there is a, I think this this point around domain industry awareness and the client awareness becomes very important. And then this is more of an intimacy question, right? So at one end, you are creating these factory models to scale it up across clients. But at the same time, how do you kind of then personalize the experience that each client gets? So that's where this you know unique nature of your consulting advisory and shaping the roadmap and journey for clients becomes very interesting. So thanks, Sangha, for sharing this. This was, a I think, a very exciting conversation.